Hey, Malachi chapter 3, verse 7. Even from the days of your fathers, ye have gone away from my ordinances, that's the law, have not kept them. Return unto me, I will return unto you. Now look at that. The paragraph that we're looking at, which we're not going to spend much time in, says you're not keeping the law. And God says, come back. Context. I will return unto you, saith the Lord of hosts. But you say, where shall we return? Will a man rob God? Oh, here we go. Yet you have robbed me, God speaking. But ye say, where have you robbed me? Me, excuse me. In tithes and offerings. This is a famous, great, some Baptist church preach. Some churches do it. Some churches will, at least once a year, they will they will fall upon this, and you know, a tithe offering, offering tithes, a faith fellow, you know, anything. Name. I'm going to tell you right off the bat. I believe it's the pastor that has the, not has the faith. I believe it's the pastor that. We got these bills this year, and the people don't give money, and we're in trouble. I don't think he's the one that has the faith in God. Or possibly he's just a terrible preacher, and they're not paying him. But what we're going to do is we're going to look at tithing. We're going to do what your typical Baptist church won't do. We're going to study tithing. Now it has 38 times of tithe and tithe in 32 verses of the Bible. Three times in Nehemiah, we'll look at that in a moment. In the New Testament, Only seven verses have tithes. Matthew, once. Luke, twice. Hebrews, four. The most verses are in the book of Deuteronomy, the law. Seven. Out of the 66 books in the Bible... Eleven have tithing. And many of Baptist churches, you're going to have tithing. Of course, it appears in the Bible more than the birthday of Jesus. Genesis 14. And these two verses here, they say, well, look, they're not under the law. Okay. Genesis 14, 20. Or verse 16. I wanted to do 20, didn't see. But 20 verse, I mean 14 verse 16, Genesis. There's been a war. Abraham is sent out to rescue Lot. And Abraham wins. And they brought all the goods... G-O-O-D-S. And also brought again his brother Lot. And his G-O-O-D-S. That's an important word you need to pay attention. And the women also. And the people. Okay, verse 20. And then this weird character Melchizedek shows up. We're not going to get into Melchizedek. And bless the Most High God, which delivered the enemies in thy hand. <coughs> and he gave them tithes of all. Of all what? What did he give tithes of? The G O O D S.
Okay? You got it? The goods? Well, you know, this is this is before the law. Yeah, but Abraham is a Jew. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, okay? Genesis 28. Twenty-eight, twenty-two. Well, look. This is before the law. Jacob's at Bethel. He's, he's had his dream. And just by chance, Bethel means house of God. Doesn't that ring a Baptist note? Verse, 20, verse 22. This stone which he had for a pillow, have I set for a pillar. Not a church. Shall be God's house. Is this kind of funny? Because God's temple did not end up in Bethel. But there is a king's chapel that was built in Bethel, and that was given over to false god worship. But we're not talking about that. And all that thou shalt give me, all that thou shalt give me, surely give the tenth unto thee. I'm going to tell you, nowhere in the scriptures does it say that Jacob ever gave a tenth to God. He may have, but it doesn't record it. Okay? Leviticus. We're going to run all the, well, all the scriptures. Leviticus, the law, 27. 30. Now notice and remember what all the, well, everything you give me, I'm going to give you 10. And the goods. Okay? We're reading content. That when a preacher gets up there and he's got his tithing month, he's not going to show you what we're looking at. Some preachers will have every week, every Sunday in that month, he will give you a tithing message. This will be, Malachi will be one of them. But not what we're looking at. 2730. All the tithes of the land, whether, okay, it's going to explain to you whether, what's the land, whether of seed of the land or the fruit of the land. It is the Lord's, it is holy. What is this tithe? Olives, grapes, pomegranates, figs, cucumbers, tomatoes. Beans, green beans. Did you get that? Did you recognize the goods and what we're looking at here? Okay. We're not done. By the way, it's called holy. Verse 32. And concerning the tithe of the herd. All right, we got a tithe of the land, we got a tithe of the herd, or the flock. Even whatsoever passes under the rod, the tent shall be holy unto the Lord. What's that? That's sheep, that's cattle, that's goats. We have a tithing of goods. We have a promise of tithing of everything you give me. We have a, a tithing of apples and pears and blueberries. We have a tithing of animals, sheep, lamb, goats. Two of them so far are mentioned are holy. How many people do you know in church? 
has brought 10% of their garden. Lay that at the pastor's feet. Oh, pastor, here's my tithe. All right. Well, what's that? Well, that's my tomatoes. That's my green beans. That's... Oh, no, 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 no. No, I meant the money. <laughs> I know a lot of a lot of people involved in, you know, with raising dogs, and they have puppies. Here you go, pastor. Here's the tenth of the puppies. Isn't that scripture? Okay, we're not done yet. Numbers. Numbers 18. You say you didn't cover them all. Uh, it's the same thing. Repetition. But you go check it out yourself. 1824. Eighteen twenty four. But the tithes of the children of Israel, remember I told you pay attention to Malachi one one, which they offer as a heave offering unto the Lord. I have given it to the Levites to inherit. Okay, here's a tithe offering. It's called a heath offering, and it's given to the Levites. Do you have Levites in your church? Are you Israel? You better not say you're Israel. That's replacement theology. All right, now, the heath offering. Look at verse 6, same chapter, verse 6. Let's look at heath offering. Behold, I have taken your brethren, the Levites, among the children of Israel, to you that have given as a gift for the Lord to do the service of the tabernacle of the congregation. Okay. Oh, wait a minute. 26. I apologize. My bad right. All right. To speak of the Levites, verse 26, saying to him, when he had taken the children of Israel the tithes and given to you from them your, your inheritance, then ye shall offer up a heave offering to the Lord, even a tenth part of the tithe. So here's a tenth of a tithe. And it's called a heave offering. So let's go back to Exodus. Exodus 29, 26. Thou shalt take the breast of the ram of Aaron's consecration and wave it for a wave offering before the Lord. It shall be there for That's going back and forth. That's the Pentecostal. Thou shalt sanctify the breast of the wave offering and the shoulder of the heave offering, which is waved, which is heaved. That's doing this. Up and down. Up and down. That's what they do at the football game. Of the ram of concentration, even that which is Aaron's, and which is his son. It shall be Aaron's and his sons by a statute forever for the children of Israel, for it is a heave offering. It's a heave offering from the children of Israel. Okay. Fruits and vegetables, herds and flocks. Now we have the ram's breath. You want to put that in the collection plate? After you heave it? Are we separating from the scriptures yet? Deuteronomy 12.6 
I'm only showing you what the scriptures say. And when now, now when you get to Deuteronomy 12, says, I want you to stop me. The moment the Bible verse that we look at, and plenty more, that when it talks about money. When it when we come to money, I want you to say, Stop! There it is. Okay. Deuteronomy 12 says, The thither you shall bring your burnt offerings, that's on the brazen altar, your sacrifices and your tithes and heath offerings of your hand, your vows, your free will offerings, and your firstlings of your herds and your flocks. Well, they say tithes and offerings. All right? When do, you, when do you put a burnt offering in the plate or the envelope? Tithes. Well, we already looked at tithes. Eve offering. That was the ram. That was the ram's bread. Stick that in the envelope. Free will offerings. Go over, and we're not going to do it. We don't have to do it. Go over to the book of Leviticus and find out what free will offerings are. And, okay? Then you have the animals in the flock. Alright? 12, 11. Then there shall be a place which the Lord your God shall choose to cause his name to dwell there. Thither shall ye bring all that I command you, your burnt offerings, your sacrifices, and tithes. Stop right there. All right, here's your tithe. You're to bring it to the place that God says he's going to put his name. A pastor of a church will have you to think that that's your church. That's Jerusalem. Your church is not in Jerusalem. So, so far, if you're to do what your pastor tells you to do, when you tithe, you got to go all the way over to the Holy Land, go to Jerusalem, and give your tithe there. Because surely we're not talking about America. Okay. Verse 17. Thou mayest not eat within thy gates. Now watch this. The tithe, there we go, of thy corn, which in the Bible is wheat, of thy wine, of thy oil, of the firstlings of thy flocks, of thy flock, and of the vows which thou vowest. No one stopped me yet. The tithing of the Bible is good. But you stop me when we get the money. Okay? When we get the money, you stop me. Uh, Deuteronomy 14. Deuteronomy 14.22 Thou shalt truly tithe, here we go, all the increase of thy seed that the field bringeth for year by year. Well, that's not Sunday morning. That's tomatoes, cucumbers, green beans, blueberries, strawberries, and other vegetation. The tide. No one stopped me yet. Verse 23. And thou shalt eat before the Lord thy God. Are uh, you telling me the Lord thy God's in your church? When the lie to see in church A says Jesus Christ is standing outside the door knocking. 
And the place which he shall choose to place his name there, Jerusalem. Where Jerusalem, where God says, My name, my people, my temple, the tithe of thy corn, thy wine, oil, firstlings of the flocks, and herds. No one's told me to stop, so we'll keep on going. 1428. At the end of three years, thou shalt bring forth all the tithe of thy increase the same year, and shall lay it up before the gates. Go back to 23, verse 23, same chapter. Thou shalt eat it before the Lord thy God, the place, the wine, the corn, the oil, the herds, and the flock. Okay, let me turn page. Deuteronomy 20, verse 12. I feel a sneeze coming. I mean, I'm not taking anything out of context, am I? And when you, you go look up your concordance, you look up tithes and tithes, you say, well, you didn't do this verse. But it's, a, it's the same thing, it's repetition. Not out of context. Uh, Deuteronomy 20, verse 12. That's definitely out of context. That's not tight. I'm just looking at this. Uh, that, that was a mixed up doo doo problem. I apologize for that one. Second Chronicles. Second Chronicles. 31. You go to Second Chronicles 31. Let me try. Maybe it's Chronicles. Chronicles 12. Second Chronicles 31. That was a boo boo. 2 Chronicles 31, 5. And as soon as the commandment came abroad, the children of Israel brought the abundance of the first fruits, corn, wine, oil, honey, all the increase of the field, and the tithes of all the things brought they in abundantly. And concerning the children of Israel, Judah, that dwelt in the cities of Judah, they also brought the tithes of oxen, sheep, tithe of holy things. What's the holy thing? What did we say earlier in Leviticus 20, verse 30, and Leviticus 32? That was the fruits and vegetables. That was the flocks. What we just read, 5 and 6, that's the holy thing. Scripture with Scripture. It matches what we just read in the law. Okay. Nehemiah. Nehemiah. Chapter 10, verse 37. That we should bring the first fruits of our dough. Everything that makes a dough, the wheat. Our offerings. The fruit of the manner of trees. The wine, of the oil, unto the priests. To the chambers of the house of our God, the temple, not your church building, and the tithes of our ground unto the Levites. The same Levite, the same Levites might have tithe in all the cities of the Tillet. That's 
fruits and vegetables. Now, verse 38 is a verse where you find tithes three times in this one verse. So it's got to be important. <clears throat> the priest, the son of Aaron, shall be with the Levites. When the Levites, do you have Levites in your church? Your pastor, oh, you know, you give us the tithes on that. Is he trying to make himself a priest, a high priest? In the temple of the Lord? Oh, Lord God, well, thank you for the presence of being in the house of the Lord this Sunday morning. How many times have I heard that prayer? Lord, we welcome you. We welcome these people in the house of the Lord. You know, I know we can't find a prayer altar in the Bible. I wonder why. We'll keep on reading verse 38. Of tithes. The Levite shall bring up the tithe of the tithes into the house of our God to the chambers and the treasure house. And the children of Israel and the Levite shall bring the offerings of corn, new wine, oil, and the chambers. Are you seeing a particular pattern with tithing? Uh, chapter 1244. 1244. Nehemiah. In a time where some appointed over the chambers, now there were rooms in the temple, outside the temple, for storage. Today you would call that the storage center. For the treasures, the offering, the first fruits, for the tithes. To gather them out of fields of the cities of the portions of the law. What's the field? The vegetables, the fruit, and the seed. Which we already read. Okay? Chapter 13, verse 5. And he prepared for him a great chamber wherefore they had laid the meat offerings. There's the offering. The frankincense, that's a, a seed, a, a herb. And the vessels and the tithes of corn, new wine, the oil. Have you got it? Have you got it? Amos 4.4 4. Amos 4.4 4. Come to Bethel. Uh oh. Now, this is God in sarcasm. Come to Bethel and transgress. Gilgal, multiply your transgressions. Come, come to Gilgal and sin. Sin. Bring your sacrifices every morning and your tithes after three years. <laughs> Gee, is it funny God says bring your tithes and all that? And, and Jacob said, okay, at the same place Jacob said, I'll give you tithes. God says, bring them. What are the tithes? Malachi. Malachi 3, verse 8. Will a man rob God? Yet where have you robbed me? But I say, where have you robbed thee? In tithes and offerings. What's the tithe so far? What are the offerings? You know, on, 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 the, on the envelopes to give to the church, got tithes and they got offerings. Well, if you put a burnt offering, you're going to make a big show in the church because before the plate gets into the, wherever they put the plate, there's going to be a fire. Leviticus talks about the peace offerings and the trespass offerings. Alright. I'm just trying to show you scripture with scripture, verse 10. Bring ye all the tithes in the storehouse. 
Are you telling me your church has a storehouse? It gathers everybody's tithes and throws it into one room? That there may be meat in my house. All right. The preacher gets up and says, you know, you got to tithe. You're not tithing. We're going to have tithe. And you're going to give faith promise and all that. And they pass a plate. Do you eat the George Washington, the Thomas Jefferson, the Benjamin Franklin? That meat is bread. That meat was in the meat offering. You go back to Leviticus, that was bread. That was flour. That was oil. Matthew. Ooh, New Testament. Matthew. 23. Matthew 23, 23. Jesus, red letter. Ooh. Jesus, red letter. Woe unto you, scribes, Pharisee, hypocrites. For ye pay tithe of mint, anise, cumin. Well, guess what they are? They're seeds. They're plants. You don't go to Walmart and, and get in that one line that has the cashier, and she checks yourself out and puts it in a bag, and then she looks at you. That will be four pieces of mint. And three pieces of cumin and uh, and an anise. She don't say that. No one stopped me. I so thought we'll keep on going. Okay, okay. Just scripture with scripture, my friend. And to, to back it up, look at Luke, the medical doctor. Writes three books in the Bible: Luke eleven forty two. The Holy Spirit is giving Luke some authority. Luke travels around with Paul. Luke is Paul's medical doctor. When the, when the apostles and disciples get sick, Paul writes to him like Timothy, take a little wine for thy stomach infirmities. Luke wrote Luke, and he wrote Acts. So, verse 42, Woe unto you, Pharisees, you tithe mint, rue, and all manner, thank you, Luke, of herbs. Okay. No one stopped me yet. Luke 18. Luke 18. Luke 18, verse 12. Look at this guy. I fast twice, I fast twice a week. <laughs> I give tithes of all that I possess. He does not say I give tithes of all my paycheck. Of what I own. You mean like the goods that Abraham got? You mean like what Jacob said, whatever you give me, I will give you a tithe of it? You mean of all the seed and all the fruits and all the animals? Is that what you mean? I think so. No one shut me up yet. Hebrews 7 5. Hebrews? Well, I wonder who Hebrews is written to. Hebrews 7 5. And bear they are the sons of Levi. You notice how Levi keeps showing up? You didn't see church anywhere. And we're coming to the end of this study of tithe. I didn't see one pastor. I didn't see one preacher. I didn't see one church. And no one stopped to say, Hey, money, who receiveth the office of the priesthood. I thought Paul said the office of, uh, tell Timothy, um, elder. Right. Has commanded to take tithe, commanded to take tithes of the people. You don't preach in your, about, about tithing the law. The law said you tithe. 
And if you didn't tithe, you didn't obey the law. Malachi, remember that? You don't do the commandments? A commandment, now here we go, mark this down, underline. A commandment to take tithes of the people according to the L-A-W. Now remember Milk is the Day? The brethren, you're going to come out of the loins of Abraham. Okay? Ooh, 7-6. We don't have to go far. But he who is descended, descent, is not counted from them that receive tithes of Abraham. Verse 8. And here men that die, the priests, receive tithes. The priest died. But there he received them whom is witness that he liveth. Uh, verse 5. Is that tithing the law and Abraham? Verse 9. And as I may say, Levi also who received tithes, paid tithes in Abraham before Levi was ever born in the loins of Abraham. God already knew that Levi would be there. He didn't say church. In verse 10, when Melchizedek met them, that is what happened in Genesis 14. Don't go running over to Genesis 14 and say, Time is No, that's before the law. Not when they're talking about inside Abram was Levi, Levi the priest, and the law of tithing. Okay. Now, the offerings, tithes and offerings, Genesis 8. Genesis 8. I hope that's a 20. Genesis 8, 20. So, so you don't think I was just kidding. This is Noah. This is before the law. I'm looking for something here. And this is correct. This is before the law. Look at, look at Genesis 7-2. Before the law, every clean beast thou shalt take by seven. And at the end of the verse, and they that are not clean. Well, before the law, even under Noah, there were clean and unclean beasts. Genesis 8.20 And Noah built an altar unto the Lord and took every clean beast, every clean fowl, and offered, here's it, ready? Offered, offer, we're going to take our offerings, burn offerings on the altar. I'd love to see you do that in church. I'd love to see you take your, your, your offering And set it afire. That's an offering. That's a burn offering. Leviticus 2. Leviticus 2. Verse 3. That's a meat offering. Now what's a meat offering? Verse 2. Handful of flour, oil, frankincense. At the end of the verse, to be an offering made by fire. Put that in an envelope and in your plate. 
So see, when you go tithe and offerings and you run to Malachi, you've got a big problem. Your offering plate is on fire. And it's too heavy. Can you imagine they bring the plate in the, in, in the back of the church and there's a lamb sitting there. What? Oh, he gave tithes of his lamb. I won't tell you what the Hendersons did, but you want to go get that cow? Merv. Uh, 2 verse 10. Look at 2 verse 10. Meat offering is for Aaron and his sons. It's a thing most holy. There's that holy. Made by fire. All right. Here's an offering. It is holy and it's given unto Aaron and his sons. What's your pastor trying to do in this church? You answer the question. I'm just showing you the Bible verse. Verse 13. Chapter 2, verse 13. This is a fun one. Every oblation which you give, the meat offering shall be seasoned with salt. The salt of the covenant of thy God to be... Thou shalt not... Thou, yeah. Neither shalt thou suffer the salt of the covenant of thy God to be lacking from the meat offering. You want to get the pastor real mad? Bring some salt to church and load the plate up with salt. And watch them get mad and say, Hey, the Vicus 2.13 says the offering. You better put salt on it. Watch them get mad. And say, Pastor, I'm just being biblical here. You're the one that's not biblical. Aren't we the salt of the earth? <laughs> uh, 4.35. The Vicus 4.35. Four thirty-five, and listen. I'm going to tell you. I, I've I've sat in the pews. I've heard the person. You go to the big four thirty-five. You get up there and you say something. Introduction. We're going to talk about tithe. And the people, the people. Oh, not again. So all they talk about is tithe and offering. Tithe and offering. Money, money, money. Four thirty-five. He shall take away the fat thereof. Gee, I want what the fat would be on. The fat of the lamb. Okay, thank you, Lord. And take away the sacrifice of the peace offering. And the priest shall burn it upon the altar. All right, there's the peace offering. It's a lamb. You take the fat off and you throw that on the fire. Man, at offering time, you need you don't need to pass the plate. You need to put the grill. If you want to be biblical. If you don't want to rightly divide the scriptures. We'll get to what the Christian's supposed to do in a moment. Luke 21. Luke 21. Verse 4. Verse 3. Verse 2. Luke 21, 2. And he saw a certain poor widow casting the two mites. He said, Of truth, I say unto you that this poor widow has cast in more then they are. They're rich people just cast it in their abundance. Look. Verse 1. He looked up and saw rich casting their gifts into the treasury. Their gifts. Alright. For all these have of their abundance cast into the offerings of God. But she of her punity of, of being poor has cast in all the living that she had. I'm surprised you don't have a church out there saying, give all what you have. The widow did. I, 
I would assume that some occultists had used that verse for that purpose. Second Corinthians nine or six. Now this is the Christian. This is how we are to give. But I say, but this I say, he that soweth sparingly shall reap sparingly. Okay? You don't give much, you don't get back much. He that soweth bountifully shall reap bountifully. You give a lot, you're going to get a lot. Not always in this lifetime. It may be just heaven, okay? Every man according as he's purpose in his heart. Notice it says heart and not law. So let him give. <coughs> not grudgingly. I have to say, money, money. I tell they want it's money, money, money. That way, God don't want you to do that. Or of necessity, there is no law for you to give. Don't you dare, as a pastor, as somebody in your church, make the, you have to tithe Malachi chapter three. Because if you tithe in, in Malachi chapter 3, God's going to load up the storehouse. If you don't tithe, you're robbing from God. Uh, no, 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 no. Paul says, what your heart says, you give. Don't give because uh, don't give because you feel you, you're forced to give. And when you do give, little gets back little. Much gets back much. For God loveth a cheerful giver. And God is able to make all grace abound toward you. That ye always have in all sufficiency. In all things may abound to every good work. Okay, back to Malachi. That was Paul. Malachi is the law of the priest. Malachi says, verse 8, Will a man rob God? Paul said nothing about rob. Verse 7, Malachi says, you have not kept the law. Paul would say, we're not under the law. We're under grace. So what does being under grace mean? Your heart. And God. Determines. What you get. Not what the law says. We're not under the law. And as far as robbing God, if you give less, low, you're going to get back low. And if you don't give at all, you're not going to get anything. Wherein have you robbed me with tithes and offerings? Ye are cursed with a curse, for ye have robbed me. Even this whole nation a church is not under a nation. Bringing all the tithes in the storehouse that there may be meat in my house. My house is not your church. It's the temple. What's the meat? What have we been reading about? The priest's food. And if I will not open the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing. Paul says, 
by what you give or by what you don't give, that's your blessing. Little, you get little. More, you get more. You give it because of your heart. Don't give it because, you know, a guy preached Malachi chapter 3 because we're not under the law. And don't give it to the Lord with an attitude. Listen, you got an attitude about writing that check or putting it in the plate. Just keep it. Imagine a Baptist preacher telling you that. Let me tell you something. If they're about to turn off your lights, wouldn't God rather have you pay your bills and have your family have the electric? Or would the, would the preacher, the pastor, rather have you give the money to him? You know, it's amazing. I've heard it. I've, I've seen it. The church needs money. Oh, the church needs money. We're going to have a sermon about how we need money, whatever it is. And then you go up to the pastor and say, Pastor, you know, my bill's about due, and, you know, I'm not making enough ever. We'll have to pray about that. Now, let me tell you in the long run. We got one more verse. First Corinthians. I'm going to tell you, and I'm not forcing you. I tell you, be perfectly proper, First Corinthians 16, to tithe and give more. You say, what do you do, Styling? I'm not bragging, but I do tithe. And I give above the tithe. And I give it because I want to give it. But I'm telling you right now, I don't give tithe to the church. But my giving is above the church, above the tithe, to the church and missionaries. And evangelistic work. I have been in churches where I didn't trust that church with the money. I didn't feel right by being in that church. And I've taken that money that should have been given to the church. I have given it to other mission. I've given to other uh, ministries, and boy, I've seen the Lord close that door in that church and open up another one for us. So, if I get to the point, rightfully, scripturally, that your church is, uh, I'm not giving you no more money, and I'm giving what I do give to the Lord cheerfully, rightfully, to ministries and to the work of the ministries somewhere else. All right. Never give to the Lord because you have to. Never give to the Lord, well, you know, I could have bought some hamburgers or whatever. I could go to the ball game, whatever. Give because you want to give. And time. Give above the tithe. That way you don't worry about the tithe. And if you paid your bills that week and you only got $5 left and you want a cup of coffee and after the cup of coffee you have $1.27 left and that's all you got. And you say, Lord, I mean with the cup of coffee, I'm sorry, Lord, but you know, I paid the bill. I got $1.27. I lost a quarter. A dollar's two. I'm going to give it to you, Lord. And God says, that you gave all, even with a cup of coffee, you gave all what you had, more than all they that give in their abundance. All right. Here is the last one. Ready? 1 Corinthians 62. Are you there? Upon Sunday, let every one of you, what did I say? What's the church say? We're in Corinthians. Nowhere 
does it say Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday? Thursday? Nowhere does it give a date, a time, a name of a day, and a name of a month in a false god. None. The Apostle Paul is in the midst of the church age, writing to Christians at the close of chapter 16 of the first letter to the Corinthians. And Paul is still writing Jewish time to Genesis 1. The beginning of even with the first day. The beginning of the day, the beginning of the evening were the second day. On the first day of the week, you can't you can't say the first day of the week is Sunday on the Roman Pope Gregory calendar. Because that's not God's calendar. And we are not paid the way they are paid. They were paid, when, when they got paid, they went to work on the first day, they worked that day, they were paid by the end of the day. They went on the second day, they went to work, at the end of the second day, they were paid. They didn't wait. To the fifth day. They didn't wait every two weeks. They weren't paid once a month. Not everybody can bring their their offerings to your church on the first day of the week because they don't get paid like that. Don't put them under a, a law or under a bondage that they're in bondage enough to their American system. That's not Bible. Wouldn't it be funny if it's a midweek service? You got to be, oh, we can't, no, we got to bring it the first, we got to bring it on Sunday. You get this person walks in there and she gets her money on Wednesday night and I just got paid. Here it is. And the rapture happens Thursday. Ha, you didn't get counted for what you gave. And you say, oh, you know, the Lord's coming anytime. The Lord's coming. But he'll come after Sunday when I put my money in the plate. <laughs> Upon the first day of the week, let every one of you lay by him in store. So every church person should go to a store. As God has prospered him. God's giving you little. God's giving you much. Now watch this. That there be no gatherings when I come. Well, we have this missionary come here. We're going to take up a, a collection for this missionary. Paul says, I don't want you to take a collection when I come. Because you know what you're going to happen? You know what's going to happen? 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians. Verse 9. If a missionary comes for many... Verse 7, 2 Corinthians 9, 7. So let him give, not grudgingly or necessarily. That missionary is going to come. He's going to feel like he has to give him. Paul says, if you gather the money before he shows up and you put it in a bag somewhere, you don't feel a necessity of giving it. For God loves a cheerful giver. That's I'm sorry, that's Bible. Now let me ask you a question. Where did I talk about money? Where did I talk about dollars, cents, pounds, uh, silver, gold? Where did I mention it?
And yet when your pastor of your church is going to get up and he's going to preach that week, he's going to preach that month, faith giving, give it to the church, and he's going to open up Malachi chapter 3, he has in his heart for you to open up your wallet and your checkbook. Lord willing, I don't know, cause I bet you my daughter probably said you'd do it. If I find out a church is going to, we're going to have faith promise, we, you know, we're going to get, I'm going to go to a restaurant, I'm going to get me some of those salt packets. And while the preacher is preaching, I'm going to open up those salt pockets, and when that plate comes by, I'm going to fill it with salt. And I'm going to smile like anything. And I'm going to put an index card in that plate where the offering needs salt. And it's also going to say, ye are the salt of the earth. And you're going to find out real quick, probably the next message, when, when, the, when the pastor rebukes whoever put the salt in that plate, that's not what he was talking about. He was talking about cash, check, or money order. And at that point in time, you need to pack your bag and say, we go somewhere else. You know the only time that Jesus in his ministry, and correct me if I'm wrong, spoke about money was he paid his taxes when Peter found the coin in the fish's mouth. When the widow gave her two mites, I believe the other only other place is when Judas sold him out for 30 pieces. So, as far as I know, there was nowhere else spoken about Jesus in, in money, gold or silver. And surely, I know one thing, we went to the passages. Get yourself a concordance and check it out yourself too. We didn't see anywhere with gold or silver in Titus. 